Uh, you mentioned environmentalists, uh, and they have traditionally uh, both against sprawl because it disrupts, uh, paves over natural landscapes, and you seem to be saying they're also in many cases against infill. I, th I think of the Sierra Club opposing Hunter's Point because there were some concerns about a creek and, there. And the Sierra Club uh, opposed the transit in uh, Marin Sonoma, the Marin Sonoma transit for years. They, they showed up when we were trying to do the infill in Oakland, and they weren't exactly opposed, but they didn't like where we put the neighborhood park. And so they delayed the process for you. So it's that kind of uh, missing the forest for the trees over and over again. So I have my one issue, and you know I'm going to do this piece of open space or this, uh, you know, or this environmental impact, and I'm not concerned with with the big picture. You write that you're very suspicious of single issue causes. I think we've got to look at this as a whole systems. And it leads to trade-offs and compromises and, mix, and mixed solutions. A good example is the salt works projects down in Redwood City. There's 1,400 acres that have been salt producing for 100 years. And uh, the strategy is to use, of the 1,400, 600 acres for much needed housing and 800 acres for wetlands restoration and levees and transit and parks and school, all the things that that community needs. So a real mixed solution. And there's just fierce opposition. There should be zero going on in that site. And it's that kind of all or nothing approach that's not going to get us to where we need to be. And you think that it's the business model, the membership model of some of the organizations that's driving that? I think that many organizations have a, you know, Save the Bay is, they have one issue. Uh, bay, bay land ex uh, restoration. Now, they just received 16,500 acres from Cargill uh, in a transfer in 2003. It's going to cost $1.5 billion to restore all that. But rather than focusing on that agenda, they're focusing on 600 acres at, at SaltWorks. And we should clarify, is Cargill a client of yours? No. But the, the developer, DMB. The developer. So yeah. you think that, look, the Bay Area needs... I only work on projects I believe in, and I believe in this one. Okay, and so there's lots of jobs in Silicon Valley. People need places to live to get to those jobs. Infill is hard, and you're saying that, look, here's a part of the Bay that ought to be developed. Part of it ought to be developed for housing, and that's a trade-off we need to make in tough times yeah. uh, to, to have... Look, it's a site that's a mile away from uh, the Caltrain station. Developers gonna pay for three miles of new transit, which will connect the ferry terminal to, to downtown Redwood City and Caltrans. Transit mean rail or buses or? Right of way, dedicated right of way, which will transition from buses to light rail as the city develops its own system. So there are lots of kind of integrated benefits that, that have to happen there. But the key issue for people is, well, can we do it all, say, on infill on El Camino, like we did in, in, on University Avenue? And sadly, the answer is no. Those small lot conversions are very important, and they're going to really revitalize places like El Camino, but it's not nearly enough. And so you're either going to end up with people commuting great distances, or you're going to use these larger sites.